that's a lot greater. But what is that like? Because honestly, I got a weird chill when you connected with this whole second row of women that we're seeing that clearly, they, it wasn't like they were reading the lyrics or had learned them. They were singing to you. Where? Yeah, you know what? I think there's something about relationships that you form as a child. They go deep, they're in your heart, you can grow up, you can go, you know, all different ways, but there's just a special place and a special bond, even if that relationship is somebody on television. So I, I, I feel that. Yeah, you feel it too. Good. Yeah. So I'm so glad you're here because I never had the chance to interview a survivor while they were still on the show. It's always after the show at the reunion or, the, you know, when we do the live finale. So just to be clear, we did not come after you. You, oh, you came after us to be on the show. No, I, I came hard after you guys came on the show. Yeah. So you have were, you were a fan back to the beginning. From day one, season one, episode one, and not only have I not ever missed a season, I've never missed an episode unless the VCR and not DVR. <laughs> VCR missed. <laughs> Um, you know, everybody sits in these casting chambers, so it's kind of a way you have to do it. It gives us a chance to see who you are. And even Lisa Welch, even everybody knows her as Blair, we still said, well, we got to see who you'd be on the show. So uh, take a look. This is a little bit of her audition tape. Go. I would like to make my home in the jungle for 40 days on Survivor, but I need your help. I need you to start the viral campaign to get me on Survivor. I don't want to be on a Lisa Welch, celebrity Survivor. I want to be Lisa Cobb on the team, right? I want to win this thing, right? So if you could just maybe tweet or tout or Facebook or whatever it takes to get me on Survivor, I will share the million dollars with you. And that proves I can do it. I can lie to you You know, it's, it's interesting that in your audition tape, you would mention I can lie. Because one of the things you're struggling with right now on the show is the fact that as a Christian mom, you're playing a game which the, the slug of the game is outwit, outplay, outlast. So did you think about that, your, the Christianity and being a mom and a role model and having these dilemmas? When you said, I'm going to go do this? Yeah, I mean, I thought, oh, I can play this game. I know it's a game. I know it's, you know, you're just playing. It's like Monopoly. But then getting out there, and you know what? I'm not playing with a little iron and a little shoe and a little top hat. I mean, these are real people with real emotions that I'm connecting with these people, and it was a lot harder than I anticipated. I couldn't just play in my head. I thought I could. My heart snuck in there and got in the way and messed me up a few times. Yeah. You, you live your life under this um, umbrella of Christianity, but what's been nagging is the little devil in you saying, I want to have a little fun too. Yeah, you know, it's like the Fred Flintstone, you know, he had the little, uh, what, little angel on one shoulder and the little devil on the other shoulder, and that was definitely was going on. Did you train for this? Did you, because you're not, a Survivor, to be clear, there are a lot of reality shows that purport to be a lot of things. Survivor is the real deal. There is no hidden candy bar in a jar waiting for you. Did you did you train for this? I trained hard. I mean, I've always worked out, but I just upped it. And then I also knew that it would be some specific things, like swimming in the ocean. So I hired a Navy SEAL to you know figure out, to help me, what would it be like swimming in the ocean? So he had me jump in with towels and swim the length of the, uh, the pool. You really and, took this No, off. I did. I, I hired a sports psychologist to help me. The mental game, I, I just went all in. When Lisa was out on the island, there are moments where we do these interviews, and typically they're alone, and that's some private time. If you need to share or vent or say something evil, you were very open, very vulnerable. Take a look, roll. I love French fries. I can eat French fries all day long. I'm an introvert by nature, so I don't do well with chit chat. I'm just not very good at that. I'm very, very shy, and so if I'm on stage, I can be behind a roll. But in real life, my tendency is just to withdraw and not let anybody in. Well, in real life, I tend to withdraw and not let anybody in. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to investigate that little comment about staying inside. Plus, I'm going to take on a little Survivor trivia game. And we have a Survivor fan here who's going to run the whole thing. We'll be right back.
Welchel getting all muddy. You wanted to get in it. What do you remember when you see that moment? Because that challenge was a standoff. That was one of my favorite moments. Uh, actually, when we get tree mail, sometimes there's a little clue that's attached to the clue. And there was a little small miniature wicker ball. And I, that's what I took home because that was such a memory. And you saying in the challenge, Lisa, finding the silly in the challenge. And it was so true. I was smiling the whole time. I was having the best time. <laughs> you know, one of the things that I love most about doing the after show, when Survivor's over, we read the final votes, and then we get a chance to talk, is when you guys are on the island and you're having the experience, while you're at camp, one of the other contestants is being interviewed, and they're often talking about you. And you may think they're your best friend, and they're over there going, I'm about to come vote to her. I'm going to vote her out. Yeah. What have you seen so far that surprised you about what people have said about you? Well, I knew I was not in the clique, you know, I knew the girls, I, they didn't really like me, they were young, and I was old, or whatever, and I felt that before, and so it felt familiar, but I didn't realize they were saying that I was like a stray dog that needed to be shot. <laughs> I mean, that kind of, ah! Because that's the trick of the game, is that you're forced to make these relationships to survive. You have to build a shelter, you have to get fire, you have to find food. And you have to vote each other out. Yes, and you have to weigh those things. Like, I noticed one of the first episodes, they all went off to talk. I guess they were kind of talking strategy. And I said, no, I'll stay here because I'm working on the fire. I had to weigh, was it more important to build a fire or to be in those conversations? And I made the wrong choice. You stayed with the fire. I stayed with the fire, and I should have frozen, but had a couple of people to freeze with. <laughs> yeah. Never let a group. Go off. Now you know. Now we know. So, since you've been a fan since day one, and I have been on the show since day one, we thought it would be fun to have a little Survivor Showdown. I've been, I've been um, challenged many times. I've never lost a, a Survivor Trivia Challenge, ever. Okay, well, so that, you can't brag about that. You were in the middle of every one of these things. I have been watching it. That's like the returning players. I mean, they totally have an advantage. And besides, you haven't had children, and the memory leads with the placenta. So I'm just going to finish that right now. <laughs> you know, it is funny that I just bragged about winning a show that I hosted from exactly. day one. That doesn't make a lot of Let's sense. Let's have a back to live trivia the yes. game, okay? Yes. I would lose that. Okay, so to host our trivia, we have a, a young Survivor fan here. Miranda. She's here with her mom, Samantha. Miranda, how old are you? I'm nine. You're nine, and it's your birthday today. Yeah. Happy birthday. Thank you. So, what is it that you like about Survivor? I like the immunity challenges and the blind sides. Oh. And when you say immunity is back up for grabs. Oh. <laughs> Spoken. Wow, you really, okay, you've just qualified yourself as a super fan. Will you host our little showdown? Yeah. All right, let's move up here. After you. All right, so we have some questions for Miranda. We have an official. Miranda, you can kind of hang over here with me, okay? Miranda, which show do you want to be on? Survivor, right? Survivor. Yeah, so you'll you'll keep close to me, is he'll keep close yeah, to me. Let's be clear. Miranda, I suppose we're going to stick together. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Okay. Yes. You're going to read the Miller. question and all of the possible answers, and then once we hear the last answer, we're going to hit our drum, and the first person in, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, and we have some sound effects, too. So, Brian, if, if we get it wrong, what do we hear? Okay, the evil snake. If we get it right, which will be me, what do we hear? That's it. Alright, girl. First question. Showdown. Welchel versus pros. How many times have Boston Rob competed in Survivor? Eight? Eight? Did you see that look she gave you? She looked at her like, I haven't read the answers yet. That's right. Sorry. There was a fly. I was just kidding on you. <laughs> A, 1, B, 4, C, 3. Oh, yeah. 4. You're correct. Yeah. Okay. I'll listen up here. <laughs> Which Survivor season did not have a tribal merch? A, Survivor of mm -hmm. the Australian Outback. B, Survivor of mm -hmm. 
Boat. C. Sur Survivor Palau. <laughs> Palau. You are correct. <laughs> one to one. Okay. <clears throat> During Survivor Amazon season six, which two players took their clothes off? in exchange for a bowl of peanut butter and a plate of Oreos starting in the beauty challenge. A. Jenna mm. Moraska and Christy Smith. B. Mm. Jenna Moraska and Heidi Storbel. C. Mm. Christy Smith and Heidi Storbel. Mm. You're in. B. You're correct. <laughs> Alright. I gotta get this one. If I don't get this and tie it up, Lisa wins. Who was the first person voted off in Survivor Australia Outback? A. Deb mm. Eaton. B. Kimmy. Mm. Kimmy Kapberger. C. Marilyn mm. Hershey. Yes. Mm. Good job. I love how you took your time to let me get in. Oh. Uh, Deb Eaton. Deb Eaton. Yeah. Okay. So here's where we stand. So it's two two. We're gonna go to our tiebreaker question. Okay. All right. And let me just say, well, so this is for bragging rights, no excuses, no takeovers, no do-overs, no nothing. Winner of this point gets worldwide rights. <laughs> bring it, bring it, Miranda. Which Fast of Life cast member wore roller, <laughs> roller skates because she was too short? A, Mrs. Garrett. So what? B, Tootie. C, Natalie. Oh. Oh. Tootie. Kim Fields Freeman. Oh, so, nice job, Miranda. You are fantastic. Do you want to uh, do you want to do a quick snuff snuff of the torch? Okay, this is a snuffer from this season. Hold on. We'll get you up here. This is my torch. I will stand here. Do you want to say what you need to say to me? Okay. Your tribe has spoken. Oh. <laughs> you are awesome. Good job, and I have something for you. Wow. More Survivor swag than you could do anything with you. Thank you. Happy birthday. All right, when we come back, we're talking facts of life and personal life with Lisa. We'll be right back. <laughs> We're back with Lisa Weltel, who just defeated me in a Survivor slash Facts of Life trivia competition. What is the single most common question you get about your time on the Facts of Life? Almost everybody asks me if I still keep in touch with the girls. And do you? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. actually, yes. Of course. And as soon as it was announced I was on Survivor, I heard from Mindy Cohn, who played uh, Natalie, and I just spent four days with Nancy McKeon, who played Joe at her ranch in Texas, so we actually... Um, we really still are good friends. One of the things you said on, on one of our clips is about, you know, isolating yourself and how it's hard to be with others. Is that related to being a child actor in those temporary families you have? I think so, because even though I grew up, you know, on a television show about friends, that was not my experience. So even back then, I remember a time when the three girls came into my dressing room and they really just kind of said, hey, Lisa, we need you to put the book down while you're in rehearsal because even then I just kind of go off and get in and put my nose in a book which is exactly what my second grade teacher told my mom which is why I got into acting in the first place because she was worried I didn't go out and play with the kids I would just be in a book and she said I'm a little bit worried about her so my mom put me in an acting class to see if it would help me overcome that shyness so so it's, it's interesting that you're an actor putting yourself out there, but really inside you're extremely shy, and does that manifest itself? Is that something you're dealing with all the time? Is that what was related to what was happening on Survivor? Oh, absolutely, because as an actor, I'm not putting myself out there. I'm hiding behind Blair, a role who she's confident, and she just, you know, makes friends and thinks everybody loves her, and so I can hide behind that role. But being on Survivor, there was no role to hide behind. It was reality TV, and it played out that this, I knew going in that I don't do chit-chat well. If I'm sitting over with somebody, I'm asking you, tell me about your parents and what's your relationship with them like. You know, I mean, we're not so talking what, about... So what is it about kids that start out acting when they're young 
that causes this to happen so often, to become isolated, to not have true deep friendships. You have friends you worked with, but if you're not working, you don't, you're not friends anymore. Well, and you don't really know if anybody wants to be your friend because they like you or because of how you make them feel when they're around you, which is, again, why Survivor was so healing for me on a million levels. I got to play the game for good or for bad, accepted or rejected, as me. As Lisa. Yeah. So, George Clooney, who I'm very open about my man crush on Clooney. <laughs> I've, I've been around him a few times at a couple of different little parties, and it's like I'm 12 trying to ask a girl out. I have nothing to say. <laughs> and, and it's just a guy. I, but So, you worked with him. Now, George Clooney then was, what, you know, a 20-year-old guy or early whatever. 20s. Early 20s. Now it's George Clooney. Yeah. Oh, it's even different oh, for you. Wow. I, you know what? I've often said that had I known George Clooney was going to become George Clooney, I would have worn makeup to rehearsal hall a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> Do do you worry when you see somebody, now the young woman in the news is Amanda Bynes, the latest child star to get in over her head, can A, can you relate to the pressure she might be feeling? I, I can, but even then I'm aware that things have changed a lot since I was on television. The pressure is even more so. But it, it, it doesn't matter. The pressure of, of life is too big to put on a small child or, or a young person and then put out there in front of the world to make a judgment on. A child needs to have a greenhouse to be able to, you know, have some, some, some uh, protection to grow, not just be put out there for all the winds of life to come and just knock them around. So does that mean that it does that mean we need to treat young performers differently, or should there not be as many young performers? You know, I I would not have I wouldn't let my children be in show business. I think it's a lose lose situation. Either they're very successful and they grow up just thinking the world revolves around them, and they have money that they don't have the maturity to know how to deal with that and freedom, or they go out on auditions and they're told all day long you're too fat, you're too you know you're not cute enough, you're not this, you're not that. I'm trying to encourage them and build them up. Why would I put them somewhere where somebody's just going to tear them down? I just think it's losing. I want to take a quick break and then come back and talk about your personal life, which you were going through while you were on Survivor. Your marriage was, was breaking up and you were having to deal with that, and now you have a whole new life. And I, wa I want to hear how you're doing with all of this change. We're going to come right back. Talking with Lisa Welch, so we've talked about Survivor, we're talking about Facts of Life, now we're talking about your your personal life. In your autobiography about being Blair on the Facts of Life, you talk about your relationship with the man you married. And one of the things that struck me was, and you wrote about it, so it's okay to talk oh, yeah. about it, right? Mm -hmm. All right. One of the things that struck me is how you ended up getting married. And here's what I took from the book, and you tell me if I have it right. You were in love with a guy, he was Jewish. You decided, it's just not going to work. Faith-wise, it's not going to work. He goes away. There's another guy in your life, but you're not really attracted to him, which you say in the book. It wasn't really a romantic relationship, and yet, things kept progressing, and he kept kind of urging and asking and putting you in situation. Before you know it, you find yourself at a mall, at a jewelry store, looking for a wedding ring, which you're certain they won't have, because you've drawn it. You know exactly what you want. Right, so far? Right, exactly, yes. And it's there. And it's, it's not like I can say, no, it's not quite like that, because I've drawn it. And, and so the woman pulls it out, and it's the ring. And that, along with what I think you said in the book, was you felt God was saying, look, I'm giving you a sign. Take it. Yeah, and, um, you know, I don't have any regrets as far as marrying Steve. I'm so very grateful, and that's where I was at that time. And we were, we were friends, and I... I thought I was, I thought if God is bigger than me and all these different situations are happening, 
then I would rather trust God than trust my own heart. Wow. Since then, Hold I... Hold on. Okay. What? So, so let's just let that sit for a second. You would rather trust God than your heart. That is a big dilemma, because you're basically saying, trust God over my gut, right? Yes. Now, as the marriage continued, you were married for, you're just recently divorced. Yes, it'll be, it would have been 24 years. Okay, so two decades. Were there times during yeah. that where you wondered, or did you stay, were you steadfast in believing God knows, even though my heart doesn't, God does? I had to shut my heart off more and more in order to stay. And why did you stay? I stayed because I had made a commitment. I stayed for my children. I stayed for... Um, I thought it was the right thing to do. Do you have... This is a loaded question because you have a family that you adore. But do you second guess the God versus heart decision? Would you make that same decision now with your wisdom? What's very um, paradoxical about this is I would not make the same decision now as I did then because I, I have changed and I have grown and I realized that if I'm listening to God, I can listen to my heart and that God's mostly going to speak to me through my heart. And so then, is there this sense of, wow, I've got some making up to do. I'm ready to date now in a different way where my heart and everything else about passion is speaking. <laughs> That's funny because my mom said this morning to me at the hotel, she said, you know, Lisa, it's, it's going on a year and you haven't even had coffee with anybody. So I really thought maybe you would just jump in to the deep end of the pool because, you know, it's been so long. And I, I, and I, I even said, you know what, I still, I want to grow in my own self so that I am not attracted to someone at the same level of my unhealthiness. All right. I've, I've done this with... So far I've done this with Vivica Fox and Jenny Garth, who are both single and looking to date. I'd like to just take a list of the qualities you'd look for in a man, because I am on a hunt now to find us. So Lisa Welchel likes what kind of a guy? Uh, a man who loves growing. Growing, got it. Spiritually aware, open, accessible, emotionally there. I got it. Okay. Got it. Good. What else? Uh, intelligent. Smart, got it. Okay, looks? Looks, um... Height, hair color, skin? You know what? Uh, I married a man 13 years older than me. Don't want to marry an old dude. Cougar time. No, 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 no! You're going younger. No, no! No! <laughs> yeah, that was no. awkward. I wrote, I wrote age appropriate. Okay, age appropriate okay. is good. But in my world, that means a little younger is okay, because you're hot. You look good, Welch. Damn right. right. Last question, do they need, do they need money? Uh, money would be nice. Okay, so money, we got it. Yeah, All right. sure, why not? I mean, if I'm right in the list. Here's our okay. shot right here. Let's just get a little, make sure we, we get this committed. Okay. <laughs> there it is right there. There are the qualities. I know what those mean. I'm putting it on my board with Vivica and with Jenny Garth. And uh, we're going to have a dating show here in a few weeks. <laughs> <laughs>